everyone. So thank goodness we made it to Friday. It is Friday, May 22nd, and we are on the one and only Ivan. Today we're going to read pages 180 to 196. All right, so let's go ahead and open our books to page 180. We're going to start going nowhere. I watch Ruby plot around the ring in endless circles, going nowhere. More visitors have been coming, but not many. And Max says Ruby's not picking up the slack after all. He says he's cutting back on our food. He says he's turning off the heat at night to save money. Ruby looks thinner to me, more wrinkled than Stella ever was. Do you think Ruby's eating enough? I asked Bob. I don't know. I'll tell you one thing, though. You're sure as heck painting enough. Bob wrinkles his nose. That stench is unbelievable. And I found yellow paint on my tail this morning. Bob isn't happy about my night painting. He says it's unnatural. Now while I work at my paint, Bob sleeps on knot tag. He claims he prefers her because she doesn't snore. He says her belly doesn't rise and fall and make him seasick. What is this plan of yours anyway, Bob asks. If you explain it to me, I could help out. He yawns. Oh, I'm sorry, he gnaws at his tail. Maybe I could come up with something that doesn't involve you, you know, paint. I can't explain it, I tell him. It's an idea in my head, but I can't get it right. And anyway, I'm almost out of supplies. I should have known I wouldn't have enough. I kick my tire swing. It splatters the drops of blue paint. That's a stupid idea. I doubt that, Bob says. Smelly, yes. Stupid, never. Most of the day I doze. Late in the afternoon, Mac approaches. Bob slips under knot tag. He prefers to keep a low profile around Mac. Mac's gaze falls on my pool. The corner of one of my paintings is visible. What? What's that, big guy? He asks. I calmly eat my orange, ignoring him, but my heart is racing. Matt kicks the plastic pool and underneath it are all of my paintings. Matt yanks one on one, excuse me, on a piece of paper. It slips out easily. He doesn't seem to notice the other paintings. The page is striped with green which is what happens when blue paint and yellow paint get together. It's supposed to be a patch of grass. Not bad. Where'd you get the paint anyway? George's kid, he considers. Hmm, I bet I can get 30 for this picture, maybe even 40. Mac turns on my TV and it's a Western. There's a human in a big hat and a small gun he has a shiny star pinned to his chest. That means he is the sheriff and will get rid of all the bad guys. If this sells quick, I'll get you some more of that paint, buddy, Max says. He walks away with my painting, Ruby's painting. For a moment, I imagine what it would feel like to be the sheriff. Good news, huh? Bob says is Max out of earshot. Looks like you might get some more supplies. I don't want to paint for Mac, I say. I'm painting for Ruby. You can do both, Bob says. You're an artist after all. While I watch the movie, I try to come up with a new hiding place for my paintings. Maybe I think I could fold them once they're dry and stuff them into knot tag. Oh, it's a long movie, and at the end, the sheriff marries the woman who owns the saloon, which is where what, which is a watering hole for humans, not horses. It's been a long time since I've seen a western that was also a romance. I liked that movie. I say to Bob, "Too many horses, not enough dogs." He comments. An ad comes on. I don't understand ads. They're not like Westerns where you know who the bad guy is supposed to be. And they're hardly ever romantic unless a man and a woman are brushing their teeth 
before they face lick, I watch an ad for underarm deodorant. How do you know who's who if they don't smell? I asked Bob. Humans reek, Bob replies. They just don't notice because they have incompetent noses. Another ad comes on. I see children and their parents buying tickets, just like the tickets that Max sells. They laugh, enjoy their ice cream cones as they walk down a path. They pause to watch two sleepy-eyed cats, huge and striped, dozing in long grass. Tigers, I know because I saw them on that nature show once. Words flash on the screen, accompanied by a drawing of a red giraffe. The giraffe vanishes, and I see a human family staring at another kind of family. Elephants, old and young. They're surrounded by rocks and trees and grass and room to wander. It's a wild cage, a zoo. I see where it begins and where it ends. The wall that says you are this and we are that. And that is how it will always be. It's not a perfect place. Even in just a few feeding seconds on my TV screen, I can see that a perfect place would not need walls. But it's the place I need. I gaze at the elephants and then I look over at Ruby, small and alone. Before the ad ends, I try to remember every last detail. Rocks, trees, tails, trunks. It's the picture I need to paint. Imagining. It's different now when I paint. I'm not painting what I see in front of me, a banana, an apple. I'm painting what I see in my head, things that don't exist, at least not yet. Not tag. I pull out not tag stuffing. Carefully, I fill her with my paintings, hiding them so Mac won't sell them. She's large, bigger than Bob, but I still have to crumple a few of them. Bob tries to settle on his nap. Oh, you're killing her, he complains. I had to, I say. I miss your stomach, Bob admits. It's so spacious. When Julia arrives, she notices that I've used up my paints and paper. Wow, Julia shakes her head. You are one serious artist, Ivan. One more thing. My finger painting had sold for $40 with a frame. Mac is happy. He brings me a huge pile of paper and a bunch of, of excuse me, a big buckets of paints. Go to work, he says. I paint for Mac during the day and for Ruby at night. I nap when I can. But my nighttime picture isn't quite right. It's big, that's for sure. When I place all the pieces on the floor of, the, of my cage side by side, the cement is almost completely covered. But something is still missing. Bob says I'm crazy. There's Ruby, he pointed with his nose. There's the zoo. There are other elephants. What's wrong with it? It needs one more thing, I say. Bob groans. <sighs> You're being a temperamental artist. What could be missing? I stare at the huge expanse of colors and shapes, and I don't know how to explain to Bob that it isn't done yet. I'll just have to wait, I say at last. Something will come to me. And then I'll know my painting is finally ready. The seven o'clock show. During the last show of the day, Ruby seems tired. When she stumbles, Mac reaches for the claw stick. I tense, waiting for her to strike back. But Ruby doesn't flinch. She just keeps puddling along. And after a while, 
Snickers jumps onto her back. 12. I lie in my cage with Bob on my stomach. We are watching Julia do her homework. She doesn't seem to be enjoying it. I can tell because she is sighing more than usual. Again, for the hundredth time, or maybe the thousandth time, I wonder what is missing from my painting. And for the hundredth time, and maybe the thousandth, I don't have an answer. Dad, Julia says as George passes by with a mop, can I ask you a question? May I, George corrects, ask away. Julia glances down at a piece of paper. What is the difference between the words spelled P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L and the one spelled P-R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E? The first one is the head of a school, like Miss Garcia. The second one is the belief that helps you know what's right or wrong, he smiles. For example, it's against my principles to do my daughter's homework for her. <laughs> Julia groans. If I'm going to be an artist when I grow up, why do I need to know how to spell? <laughs> With a laugh, George heads off. Poor Julia, I think. Gorillas get by just fine without learning how to spell. All those endless letters, those sticks and circles and zigzags filling up books and magazines, billboards, and candy wrappers. Words. Humans love their words. I leap up. Bob goes flying straight into my pool. A word. You know how I feel about wet feet, Bob yells. He scrambles out of the water and shakes each foot in demise. I look out my window at the billboard. I can still hear Max's voice in my head. Come to the exit eight, big top mall and video arcade, home of the one and only Ivan, mighty silverback. I count to 12 and then I count again just to be sure. All right, well, that's where we're going to stop for this week, okay? So go do your stuff on Google Classroom, and remember, there's no school on Monday, the 25th, so your next assignment will be May 26th. All right, bye, guys. Have a good